Hello there. Welcome to Anybody Can Code C++ series. So if you are new to this series, you can click on the card that's above to check out our previous videos. Hi there. Welcome back to the ABC series of C++ from Facebook. So uh, in the previous videos, uh, we had seen uh, what the OOPs concept are, right? So I had explained you what uh, the four concepts are, the very important ones. So uh, in this episode of us, we will be discussing mainly on the classes and objects, right? So how to implement the things, whatever we had, uh, uh, you know, seen in the previous video related to OOPs concept and uh, how we can uh, call the objects, what are classes, what are objects. So each and everything will be uh, uh, dis displayed and explained over here. So uh, the very important thing for you to learn when it comes to class and object is uh, the syntax of uh, how to write these things, okay, and how to uh, access one another, okay, the objects of one class or the uh, different objects of the other class and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, there are different ways of accessing them, okay, and there are something called as access specifiers also. I'll be explaining in detail about that as well. And then there is something called as code reusability. Right. So uh, when it came to the concept of uh, inheritance, I had told you, uh, the main, uh, you know, funda why we write uh, uh, you know, programs and classes and objects is because we can use the codes again and again. We do not have to write the codes again and again. We can use what if it's written once over there. Right. So that is code reusability. So let me just take you across to the platform and uh, tell you each and everything, guys. Okay. So uh, here I've got my basic template written over here. Uh, I'll just write down using namespace std so that I don't have to write std every time. Okay, so first of all, uh, how exactly do you write a class? Right. So if you remember a function, just like function, I'll be giving a keyword called as class over here. Okay, in functions what we had done is uh, we had given the first return type and then the name of the uh, function and then the arguments, right, and the body and the semicolon or whatever. Right. So here I'll be giving the first keyword called as class. Okay, if there is a class keyword, which means that I'm supposed I'm, I'm about to create a class. And uh, next will be the name of the class. Okay, so first is the keyword class. Next is the name of the uh, class. So here I'm naming the class as sample. Okay, and after that is done, uh, you'll be just uh, defining that particular class. So how do we be defining using the brace brackets? Okay, so whatever you write inside these particular uh, lines of uh, you know, the compiler will be considered as the codes for that particular class. Okay, and a very important thing is you're supposed to put a semicolon at the end of this particular definition of the class. Okay, very important guys or else it will not be uh, considered by the compiler. So uh, this is the basic template of the class. So class keyword, name of the class and your uh, uh, definition and finally the semicolon. Okay, that is your uh, uh, syntax of the class. And uh, after this, as I told, uh, we have something called as objects, right? So what exactly are objects? So uh, as I told, if you have created one code once, okay, or a piece of code once, you don't have to, you know, go on writing it again and again, right? So that is how you can uh, 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 write the objects, okay? So for example, let's say I write a variable over here, okay? I take a variable called as int a. Okay, what is stored inside this particular sample int a. Okay, so if I want to access this particular variable int a. Okay, what I'll have to do is. Okay, so let's say I'll be scanning this particular uh, variable first. So c in. Okay, the user will be scanning c in. Next, what I'll be doing is I'll be taking the name of the class. Okay, name of the class and I'll be using a dot operator. Okay, I'll be using a dot operator and next I'll be using the name of the object. Okay, I've just written uh, uh, in angular bracket so that you can understand. So uh, here whatever the name you'll be giving for the object, you'll be writing it after the uh, dot operator. Right, so how do you give the name to the object, right? So, uh, so inside the int mean, okay, or wherever you want to, uh, you know, uh, create the object for a specific class. Okay, so in there what you'll have to do is first you'll have to write the class name. Okay, so the class name what I've taken is sample and the object name what I want to create will be obj. Okay, you can give any names over here guys. For my convenience, I'm giving obj. Okay, so I've created an object okay for my class sample. Okay, so whatever I've written over here inside that will be applicable for this particular object. 
So o, o, obj will be my object. So for obj, I've got one particular variable called as a. So let me just replace this uh, entire thing by obj. Okay, why am I replacing it? Because I've named my object as obj. That's it. So what am I doing here? I'm just, uh, 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 you know, scanning my uh, 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 variable, right? So whatever is present inside this particular class. So how do I do that is, okay, since I've created an object over here, okay, since I've created an object over here, I'll be using that particular reference. Okay, I'll be using that particular reference and then I'll be scanning that particular variable. Okay, I'll be scanning that particular variable. Let's say uh, I want to uh, take it in as uh, A. Okay, same thing. Okay, here the variable name is A. So I'll be using the same variable name. Okay, if it was B, I would have been putting B over here. So I'm scanning obj.a, which means that through this particular reference, I'm going inside this particular class and I'm fetching this particular variable. Okay, that is what this particular sentence means, guys. Okay, so you don't have to mention sample again over here because we have already told that uh, when it comes to sample, we have got one particular reference that is object. And using this particular object a reference, we can do anything what we want to do. So let's say after scanning, I want to print it. Okay, so how do I print it? So uh, obj uh, dot uh, a. That's it. Okay, so let me just uh, run this piece of code over here. Let's check what happens. Just drag this up. Okay, so here what they're saying is we do not have any specifiers. So I deliberately did not write any specifiers here to make you understand that why specifiers are required. So I had told you that there are, uh, you know, access specifiers, right? So what exactly these access specifiers are? They uh, help the class or the uh, main method to understand if it can access certain things or not from a particular class. So uh, we have got uh, uh, three different access specifiers, guys. So the first one is public, okay? And the next one is private, and the last one is protected. Okay, so we'll be discussing on all these things, what exactly public, private, protected is. So uh, here, this particular variable, I want main to access it, okay? I cannot block it. So what I'll be doing is I'll be giving I'll be giving an access specifier called as public. Okay, so this is how you exactly give an access specification to anything inside a class. So you write the name of the access specifier, give a semicolon, and then you write whatever you want to write. Okay, so if you want everybody to access whatever is written inside, you give access specifier called public. Okay, and uh, now let's try to run this code. Let's just check uh, what happens. Is it running? Yeah. So you can see we have come to the black screen, which means it is running now. So I'll just give 2020 and I'll click enter. So you can see 2020 is being printed. So just to make it uh, you know slightly fancier, uh, I'll just uh, type down certain statements is the number. Okay, so let's just try to run this along. Okay, I'll just uh, type uh, 4050. You can see 4050 is the number is being printed. So we are directly accessing uh, uh, the variable uh, that is integer variable a from the class without being declared inside the main method or the main function, right? So this is how you can access a class the object and the variables and whatever is present inside the class. So I hope you have understood how to create a class and uh, how to create an object, okay, and how to access an object, guys. Right? So uh, now let's go for uh, private access specifier. So you have seen what a public access specifier does. Now let me just uh, create this as private. So now if I try to run this particular code, it will not definitely allow me to access A. Okay, why? Because it sees that it is in the private. Okay, uh, a private access specifier, you will not be able to access it. But now let me do one more thing. So I cannot access A, correct? So let me just write a function to access that particular variable. So what I'll do is I'll write down a, a small function over here. So uh, let me just uh, try to take the square of it. So this function will be public. Okay, so you can see I've given a public access specifier. And uh, uh, below that, okay, if you're getting confused, I'll just write it down over here itself. Okay, and after that, I'm writing int sq. sq means square. Okay, and uh, what is this function supposed to do? It is supposed to return me the uh, square root of it. But I'll be using the a variable over here. Okay, let's say then return a into a. 
okay so what i've written over here is uh, this is a function which will accept a variable from the main method okay let's say it is accept, accepting a variable called as x from the main method and once it accepts that particular variable and the value which is stored inside it i'm asking it to transfer it uh, transfer the values to the variable a which is present inside my class sample okay now i cannot directly access a but i can uh, you know access a using my functions sq okay so now let's just uh, uh, try to you know take certain variable x okay i've not declared it so let me just declare it int x okay so once i've scanned this particular x what i'm supposed to do is i'm supposed to call the function sq okay so this is how you call the functions using the object base so object uh, dot the name of the function in parenthesis okay so we can just write over here is the square value okay so i've written this and also i'm passing x over here right so the parameter what i'm passing over here is x okay so this x will be taken to this particular function okay and the value of x will be stored inside a the va uh, variable a which is present in class sample and that will be multiplied with itself it will be returned to wherever this function call was done right so where was this function call done it was done over here so it will return a value that is a into a now we can see that uh, we have not directly uh, you know accessed a but using the function sq we have accessed a which was in private uh, access specification and let me just run this particular code and uh, check if it works So you can see we have come to the execution screen. I'll just write uh, 2020. So you can see it is giving the squared value. Let me just take a simpler number for you to understand. Let me just take uh, 8. Okay, so you can see 64 is the square value. So uh, that is exactly how you can use the access specifier. Okay? So you can use private uh, access specifier. You can use public access specifier. And the last one is your protected access specifier. Now this is a very typical access specifier where you, uh, you know, uh, you'll have to understand the concept of inheritance first. Okay, so uh, before going to that particular, uh, uh, you know, idea, let me just uh, try to do certain more things related to the same code. Now uh, you can do a lot of things over here, guys. You can write uh, this in loops also, right? So let's say you want to uh, uh, find the square root of a lot of numbers. So uh, let's just try to do certain manipulations. So what I'll do is uh, I'll take a loop. Okay, so inside this particular main method, I'll take a while loop and I'll just put one over there. Okay, so which means that it is supposed to run infinitely, right? So one is true, it is supposed to run infinitely. And I'll just give a C out statement saying that uh, obj dot uh, sq. Okay, obj dot sq and parenthesis. Okay, and uh, I'll write a statement is the square value. is the square value okay so this is what i've given and then i'll give uh, end end for the cursor to go to the next line okay so this is what i've written but uh i'm, I'm not supposed to make it an infinite loop so uh over here i'll do a small change okay i'll do the calling over here again okay obj dot sq okay i've done the calling over here and inside this particular function sq, I'll do certain small changes. Okay, so what I'll do over here is, I'll just uh, uh, scan the variables here. Okay, so you can see I've not scanned anything over here. So first what I'll do is I'll scan the variable over here. So I'll just declare a variable called as x. So if I'm scanning the variables over here, I do not have to write any parameters inside the functions, right? So I'll just remove this parameter. Okay, I'm, I've declared x. Okay, let me just scan x over here. So I've scanned X, okay. And then I'll just write a conditional statement that if my X value is greater than zero, only then perform the operation which is given below. Okay, the operation which is given below is returning the square root of it. Okay, else it is supposed to return a zero. Okay, so it is supposed to return a zero. Now what you can see over here is guys, uh, if you can understand this, see what is happening here is while obj dot sq, so here the function call is being done and it comes to this particular function over here. Okay. And it will ask the user to give certain values. Right. So now let's say uh, the user will be giving a value five. So five is greater than zero. So it will be stored inside a 
and 5 into 5 will be returned to this particular function call. So while 5 will be there, so 5 means obviously it is true. So while true, see out 5 square. Okay, so sorry, 5 into 5 that is 25, right? So 25 obviously true. So C out 25 is the square value. Okay, so that is how exactly it will work. So let me just run this code for you and uh, uh, tell you how it works. Okay, so uh, we have missed one parenthesis is what it is saying. Yeah, we have missed one parenthesis for the function. So let's just do it again. Uh, so we are in the back screen now. So first I'll try to give a very simpler uh, value, let's say 6. Okay, so it's taking a lot of time over here. So 36 is the square value, right? So that is what it is saying. So it is not stopping, right? So it is still asking us to give certain values. So let's just give uh, uh, 7. Okay, uh, it's repeating twice here. Okay, now let's just see what it is uh, later. But it is saying 49 is the square value. Now as soon as I give a 0, okay, it terminates the program, which means that this condition is being checked, right? So if it is 0, okay, uh, it is returning 0 and while 0 means it is just uh, 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 closing that particular while loop, it is not printing anything, right? So while it was being printed twice, so you can see over here, 7 and 7, it was asking us to give the values twice, right? So that is because uh, uh, here first C in will occur, right? First C in will occur because the function call is being done, it will come here, it will ask us to enter the value. Okay, and again one more time obj.sq. So again one more time uh, uh, your, uh, uh, what is that, C in will occur. So C in is occurring twice, so that is why the compiler is asking us to type twice. So what you can do is uh, uh, you can just tell the compiler or you can just modi modify the outputs like this is my first output and the first output I want to find the square root of 7. Okay, I want to find the square root of 7. So 49 is the square. Okay, next this is my second uh, output uh, or the input what I am giving and in the second input I want to find the square root of uh, let's say 9. Okay, and 81 is the square value. And as soon as I give 0 and click enter, you can see the loop terminates. Okay, so this is how you can write, uh, uh, you know, codes very beautifully when it comes to classes and objects. So as I told, uh, we have got one more access specifier left that is uh, protected access specifier. So when it comes to the concept of inheritance, uh, you'll be able to neatly understand why we have one more access specifier called it, call it protected guys. So uh, till then, I hope uh, you have understood and uh, please try to code on your own days and uh, try experimenting based on classes and objects and uh, we'll definitely try to uh, do a lot of stuff in the next videos. Okay, so uh, practice and happy learning. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe and do click on the bell icon so that you get notified when the further videos are released. And also, check out our Instagram page and WhatsApp broadcast services. The links are in the description below.